Budapest is ready to be a platform for peace talks. This idea was voiced by the Prime Minister of Hungary, Viktor Orban. Recently he discussed with Vladimir Putin the necessity of immediate ceasefire in Ukraine. Realizing it's impossible, he invited presidents of Russia, Ukraine and France and Chancellor of Germany to the capital of Hungary. Putin allegedly even gave his consent. It's worth to mention that Ukraine, Russia, France and Germany are the countries of Normandy format, which could could not resolve the issue of ceasefire in the Ukrainian Donbass for seven years. And since the beginning of the open Russian invasion of Ukraine, Germans and French still don't dare to take decisive steps against the Russian Federation. It's not worthy that Orban considers Volodymyr Zelensky one of his antagonists. Instead, Orban himself is called by the media perhaps Putin's greatest friend in Europe. Russia sells gas to Hungary at great discounts, although official Budapest condemns the Kremlin aggression and the killing of civilians. Official Budapest has refused to supply Ukraine with weapons or allow convoys from the West to pass through its territory. At the suggestion of Orban, except Putin, no one has yet agreed. Instead, there was another willing to take part in the negotiations, the self-proclaimed president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko. Negotiations are impossible without the participation of Belarus. Since you got us involved in this, I'm talking about the Western countries, the position of Belarus should naturally be voiced. We do not proceed from the fact that we have been immersed in the same basket with Russia. We proceed from the fact that this war is behind the fence of our country. This is said by the one from whose territory Russia launches missiles at Ukrainian cities, from whose territory Russian planes take off dropping bombs on civilian neighborhoods, from whose territory Russian troops invaded Ukraine and approached Kyiv within a day. And this, as Lukashenko assures, is not because Belarus is together with Russia. The West involved them into this. Although the first rounds of talks between Ukraine and Russia took place on the territory of Belarus. However, Belarusians did not take part in them. They only provided a platform. At that time, Lukashenko did not seek to be a party to the talks. By the way, negotiations did not have much success. The Russians issued ultimatums, the Ukrainians disagreed. The progress came after talks in Turkey, a NATO member. After these talks, Russians declared that they will reduce the intensity of fighting in the Kyiv region. In fact, they were driven out to the territory of Belarus by the armed forces of Ukraine. And later, Russians withdrew their troops from Chernihiv and Sumy regions. At the same time, Ukraine announced a draft agreement on security guarantees as one of the points of a possible future peace agreement. Requests have been sent to a number of countries with different conditions offered. Part of them were contacted on as a guarantor of military aid, the others of the imposition of strong economic sanctions in the event of repeated aggression against Ukraine. Among those who agreed to consider the document, the United States, Great Britain, Turkey, Poland, Germany, France and Israel. However, no one has yet said their final word. And while everyone is going through the options of the agreement, Australia is sending its aid to Ukraine. It's not even a European country, it's in another hemisphere. After Volodymyr Zelensky's speech, the Australian government decided to send Bushmaster armored personnel carriers to Ukraine. Such vehicles are in the service of the Australian Armed Forces, the Army of the Netherlands and some other countries. The first consignment – four combat vehicles. In total, according to the ambassador of Ukraine to Australia, Vasil Miroshnichenko, 20 of them will be sent. The Czech Republic has also decided to send heavy equipment. Human curiosity is normal. I understand those who want to know what we supply to Ukraine. Sorry, I can't tell you more. War is raging there and we don't want to make it easier for the killers. Believe me, we are sending the necessary military materials to Ukrainian friends. 
But today, most of all, Ukraine is waiting for military assistance from the United States. The US has repeatedly sent Javelin and Stinger anti-tank missile systems in particular. But the US Senate has just passed a law on land leases for Ukraine. This means landing or leasing military equipment and weapons. According to the procedure, the law has yet to be approved by the House of Representatives and signed by President Joe Biden. When that happens, Ukraine will in theory be able to count on receiving, for example, American tanks and planes. The sooner Ukrainian army will be able to liberate its territories, stop the killing of civilians by occupiers, stop the Moscow horde and prevent it from going further west.